Hello and welcome to part 105 of Let's Play Danganronpa. When we left off, something happened and we appear to be in the trial and I've forgotten exactly what was going on, but... While we were all gathered in the infirmary, he was moving Ishimaru from the physics prep room. Okay, so I'm assuming we're talking about Yamada. So Yamada had something to do with the murder, apparently. I've, I've only just gotten up, don't blame me. <laughs> okay, right, so. While we were all gathered in the infirmary, he was moving Ishimaru from the physics prep room. And then, he started speaking the wrong language. If that's the case, we can also explain why the art storage room's door was locked. The storage room was locked? After the two guys' bodies disappeared, we all went searching for them, right? Well, me and Sakura went straight to the art room then. And the door to the storage room was locked. Hold up a sec. Hold up a sec. I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I've just got to turn it down a little. For drowning out my voice. <laughs> On top of that, the door lock is such that it can only be set from inside the storage room. In other words, when Asahina and Ugami were in the art room, someone else was inside the storage room. Which would mean we, that was Yamada, having just be, just after he finished transporting Ishimaru's body. By faking his death, Yamada was able to slip under the radar and bring Ishimaru to the storage room. This would have been a pretty high radar if Yamada was able to slip under it. Meaning he wasn't simply a victim in this incident, but a perpetrator. But, to think one of the victims would himself be involved in the crime. No way, I don't believe it. If it's that hard to believe, but I could show you another piece of evidence. There's still more? Yes, the most conclusive evidence of Yamada's involvement has yet to make an appearance. You know what it is, don't you, Nagi? The item Yamada stole from the victim, Ishimaru. Wait, does she mean the thing that's torn... I was talking about the note Yamada had hidden on himself, aren't you, Kirigiri? Hidden on himself? Found it hidden in his underwear when investigating the bo his body. Inside? His underwear? His underwear, I see. Putting the whole underwear business aside, how about we take a look at what the note says? Found a hole like a secret path and see the outside, probably a way out. Would be a bad if Monokuma found out, so don't talk to anyone. Meeting the physics prep room at 6am. Ah, that's the note I was telling you about, dude. The culprit lured me out using... Hold on a sec, it's not quite the same. The note I got said would be bad if Monica and we found out, so don't meet any... so don't talk to anyone. Meet in the rec room at 1am. That's right. This is a completely different note from the one you received, Type Curry. Completely different? What I'm saying is, in addition to Type Curry, one other person was called on by the culprit. The other person, the one who received this note was your mother's underwear. Of course! It all makes sense now! No. No, that's not it at all. That would be ridiculous. Yes, it was Ishimaru. The person who received this note was the deceased Ishimaru. Aha! Uh -huh. Objection! Oh, objection! It's not sure what he getting that, but didn't he see that... Didn't he say if he had that? Then that means it was Hippie, and not Kitty, who the note was summoning. Um, by Kitty you mean Ishimaru, and by Hippie you mean Yamada, right? No shit, Sherlock, you don't need to explain every little thing. Yikes, genocide can be downright terrifying. I can't back down. So I'm assuming we're going with Ishimaru's torn bit of paper. Oh, no, no, apparently not. I've got no idea what I'm meant to do with any of these. If he had the note, didn't he? That note... was obviously meant for Hiffy. Oh, not that one. The, other, the contents of the note. What well, time did the note specify they meet at 6 in the morning? Oh, broken whisk watch. Who cares what it said? 
Yes, it does. It's the time where which wristwatch broke. Figured it out because I'm smart. Yay. Because I'm smart. No, they are connected. Huh? What are you meowing about, on about, kid? The time mentioned in this note is 6 a.m., which is the same time Ishimaru was killed. As his wristwatch showed us. And that's not all. There's also another meeting place specified in the note. The physics prep room. Ah, oh, yes, that was where Ishimaru was murdered. In other words, Ishimaru was killed at the time and in the place given in this note. Isn't that sufficient evidence that Ishimaru was the intended recipient of this note? I see. If that's how it was... No objections! Swift was deceived by that note, just like me. What an abhorrent, cold-hearted, abominable... and not abominably... inhuman dude, luring us out of the temptation of outside. But hold on. Why do Yamada have the note of Ishimaru as a recipient? And in his undies... That has to be because Yamada fired it from Ishimaru's dead hands. What? He took it? What evidence do you have of this? Go on, say it. The evidence showing Yamada took the note from Ishimaru's... from Ishimaru after his death... was... Yes. When Kirigiri and I were investigating Ishimaru's body, we found a scrap of paper clenched in his hand. My suspicions are correct from the torn part of the scrap paper. Just as I thought, it matches the note Yuma Yamada had. I love the way that he didn't check this before, he just assumed it fit. He didn't go, you know what would be a good idea, Kirigiri, before we go into this? We actually check that these fit together. Just so that we don't get in there and get proved to be complete imbeciles when it, like, mismatches completely. completely unprepared. And the scrap of paper Ishimaru was holding on to and the note Yamada was hiding exactly, they're both the same sheet of paper. Ishimaru held a fragment of the note he'd supposedly received while Yamada possessed the remainder. There's only one way to explain the situation. Ishimaru died with the note held tight in his hand, Yamada attempting to rob him of it, mistakenly left a corner of a page in Ishimaru's grip. Is that what you are suggesting? In which case that means Yamada knew the note was an important piece of evidence. Yes, and that in itself is evidence of Yamada's involvement. I see. The stars were aligned, dude, there's no question. Yams was inextricably, inextricably involved in this in incident. In essence, Yams is alive right now and he's the culprit, dude. No, that can't be. For one thing, his pitch is crossed out. Yamada was definitely dead when we found him in the art storage room. Second corpse discovery announcement we heard serves as testament to that. No, it wasn't. He woke up again. Then, who killed Yamada? The true culprit. He was likely murdered when we found their bodies in the art storage room just after moving Ishimaru. Then, he was murdered in the span of time between Ishimaru's disappearance and when we found the bodies. At that time, we had all split up to search for missing corpses. Which is to say, nobody had an alibi for Yamada's murder. But me and Sakura were together. Have a little shame with you, you fatuous whale. What? Who are you calling a fat whale? Anyway, dudes, yeah, the time of death is an issue, but we've got an even bigger problem than that. Even bigger problem, you say? What kind of weapon was used to kill Yams? Weapon? I mean, look at this, the Monokuma file says, Ishin Yams had their heads split open in a, simul in a similar way with similar weapons. But dude, just as I'm as three and four, we were left in the infirmary and physics prep room, you know? Yams was killed in the art storage room. Wouldn't that mean the culprit went back and got one of those hammers off Yams and returned the hammer to the room it came from? But isn't that a bit too risky? Now there's a surprise. You've actually got something other than air in that skull of yours. I'll have you know it's packed to the brim, dude. Eric is correct. That does indeed pose a problem. Monokuma file says the two of them were killed with similar weapons. But hammers number three and number four were remained in the rooms where they were originally found. Then how do you propose the culprit went about carrying off one of the hammers? I can't even imagine a possibility. 
What about, then what about Justice Hammer number one and number two, the ones used to attack Slaz and Yamada? They too remained in the rooms we found them, and anyway, they don't look like they have enough lethal force. I think if you wield anything, you can give it enough lethal force to back someone's brains out, mate. Except for TV remote. Sorry, that was what I just looked at when I was looking at my room to find an example. I was like, nah, the TV remote would probably break first. But, um... I'll probably bash someone's head in with my collector's edition of the Old Republic. Star Wars, for those of you uneducated folks. Anyway, um... Um, then... Isn't it possible someone, something else was used as the murder weapon? There's no way it could have been anything else. They were killed with similar weapons. In which case, what was the weapon used to murder Yamada? Unless we can figure out what was actually used to kill Yamada, we'll never be able to reach for truth behind his crimes, so I've got to do whatever I can to answer that question. It's the paint, it's the washed one. It's the washed one, because it's the same size as, yeah, just this hammer number four. Was the murder weapon? Just this hammer number three? Or just this hammer number four? Neither. In either case, how did the culprit manage to bring this tro his chosen weapon to the crime scene? Furthermore, to do so without being seen. Presenting to... What? Such a determined expression makes me want to do you. But I have no idea what you're talking about, Ma. Right? Think carefully. There's a contradiction somewhere. But it has to be. Deadly. Any, any all? No, not that. There we go. Gotcha. I lost points. I lost nine points. Oh, that sucks, don't it? The murder weapon wasn't a justice hammer, but some other weapon. But what other weapon? The hammers in the art storage room, couldn't the culprit have used one of them? Plus, all of the hammers in the art storage room were covered in bits of stone and dust. Except for one, which, for some reason, had been washed. It was washed? I'm certain the hammer was washed because it was a true weapon to use to kill Yamada. The culprit took the time to wash the hammer to get rid of the blood that had gotten on it. On top of that, there's an array of hammers of all sizes hanging on the wall in the art storage room. Several of those hammers were missing. Couldn't the just this hammers themselves have been made using those hammers as a base? If so, it satisfies the condition that they were killed with similar weapons. Just after bringing Ishimaru's body to the art storage room, Yamada was killed by with one of those hammers. And the true culprit, the person who made Yamada their accomplice and betrayed him, did it. No, just hold on a minute. We already discussed this. An accomplice has nothing to gain given the rules set concerning the graduation from the academy. In other words, it's not possible there was an accomplice, and you should per perish the thought. Accomplices are out of the question, she's right. That should have been the case. It should have been, but... Please only give me one thing to choose from this time. I suck at choosing the right one. Yay! Hold on, what? Why are you giving me a washed hammer? That's useless. That's useless, guys. According to the rules, when a collaborative crime is committed, only the person who performs the murder can make it out alive. And two people were killed, which... Chance of an accomplice. Indeed, you are correct. But that assumes only one crime took place. Whereas two crimes actually did. Okay, I think we've got it. Slur says it's not possible that there was an accomplice, but can she really be so sure about that? Find the rules. When a collaborative crime is committed, only the person who performs the murder was it. You can make it out alive. Okay, the game's... 
Yeah. Gotcha. My game spazzed out a little bit. Not bad. But two separate crimes occurred, so does it really count as a collaborative effort? What do you mean by that? Naturally, having an accomplice is out of the question in the case of there being a single crime. One murder can save only one person from adding an accomplice and throw scales of balance. Throw the scales of balance? It's a matter of risk versus reward. In other words, the re remuneration must be offset to the dana danger. There's no point in co-conspiring a murder if you too won't be saved. On the other hand, if you balance the scales, it's not impossible to form a mutually beneficial partnership. Two culprits committing two separate murders, assisting each other in their own respective crimes. The true culprit proposed this plan to Yamada in order to gain his cooperation in their crime. Most likely, Yamada was the one who killed Ishimaru. By committing his murder, Yamada lost his escape route. His murder, Yamada lost his escape route and was forced to help the culprit commit theirs. What? In short, what happened today was a serial murder at the hands of a single culprit. But two separate murders by two separate culprits. And that, and the fact that it was made to look like a serial murder was all misdirection by the culprit. The disguised madman with similar murder weapons with bodies disappearance. But given them common commonalities, the culprit made it seem as though only one crime had taken place. The culprit proposed this plan to cure his accomplice's cooperation and in the end eliminated the biggest obstacle of his own to his own success by murdering that accomplice. Which means betraying Yamada was part of a plan from the get go. What the heck? That's the most despicable thing I've ever heard. Really? I think it was a fairly solid plan, well, aside from the choice of accomplice, the most important characteristic of this incident was the fact that two crimes were disguised as one. I'm also almost positive Kirige had that figured out from the very beginning. Ah. And that's why she told us to think of the murders as separate incidents and not a serial murder. You're outstanding, Kirigiri. Maybe I asked a little too much, so. Almost unbelievably so. I accept the existence of an accomplice now. The question begs, who was the one manipulating the Yamada? That is the question. True culprit, the person who controlled Yamada and set the stage for those two murders. Everything we've discussed up to this point, every detail of these crimes, Taking it all, to, all of it together, there's only one person it could be. What? What? That's not enough to go on. Right, it can't be Nagi. Sakura as an alibi. Could be Kirigiri. Asahino has an alibi. It's not how Kuri because he has an alibi. Yeah, he Celeste, Genocider, and then back to me. So it's not Genocider because she doesn't kill like that. She's probably following Tagami around all the time, so it's unlikely to be Tagami. So I have a Kirigiri or Solaz. Shit. Um, no, no. Can't be Kirigiri. Oh, I got it right. Heels to the fuck yeah. Solaz. Oh dear, have I done something suspicious? You would me. You wound me, but enough with the jokes. You think he's joking? Oh yeah, because... Yup, got it. Are you not saying Yamada and I work together? Goodness me, you think Yamada and I could work together? Hey, Yamada followed you around like a little puppy. Well, a massive puppy. No chance in hell, you shit for brains. Who in the right mind would work with that gutless coward? Well, I think this is about the right time to do it with... Solaz's face juddering on the left hand side there. So, um, to see how much more her face can judder on the left hand side, join me for the next episode on the top right. Previous is on the top left. Notice in the bottom middle. So, until next time, folks.